Hello students, in this video I will give a introduction to new chapter straight lines and it is the continuation of the study of coordinate geometry. We have already studied the concept of coordinate geometry in the previous class. Just I will recall the important results you studied in previous class and then I will give the introduction to the straight line. In the coordinate plane given below and it has two scales, one running across the plane called the x-axis, it is the horizontal line which is called as x-axis and another a right angle to it that is a vertical line which is called as y-axis. You have the idea of the coordinate system and x-axis and y-axis. The point where the x-axis and y-axis cross each other is called origin and at that point both x and y are 0. On the x axis, value to the right of origin are positive and those to the left are negative. Similarly, on the y axis, values above the origin are positive and those below are negative. Thus, a point's location on the plane is given by two numbers the first number tells where it is on the x axis and which is called x coordinate or abscissa and the second number which tells where it is on the y axis and which is called y coordinate or ordinate. You remember this term that is abscissa and ordinate and if you take any point on the plane we will have an ordered pair of real number and that is called x comma y in which x is called abscissa and y is called ordinate. Together they define a single unique position on the plane. Thus if you take any point on the plane you will have a unique ordered pair of real numbers. Conversely for every ordered pair of real number there is a point on the plane. Now this is the figure corresponding to the coordinate axis one is horizontal line and which is called x axis and another one is vertical line which is called y axis and the point of intersection is called as origin. Now we will have the important results in the coordinate geometry and that is the first one is distance formulae that is distance between the points x1 y1 and x2 y2 is given by pq is equal to square root of x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square. These formulas are very important and you should remember all these formulae. This you already studied in the previous class. And for example, the distance between the point 6 comma minus 4 and 3 comma 0 is square root of x2 minus x1 whole square 3 minus 6 whole square plus 0 minus minus 4 that is 0 plus 4 whole square 3 minus 6 is minus 3 whole square that is 9 plus 4 square is 16 9 plus 16 is root 25 is equal to 5 units this is the distance between these two points and second formula is the coordinate of a point dividing the line segment joining the points x1 y1 and x2 y2 internally in the ratio m is to n given by mx2 plus nx1 divided by m plus n comma my2 plus ny1 divided by m plus n. Coordinate of the point which divide a 1 comma minus 3 and b minus 3 comma 9 internally in the ratio 1 is to 3. If you apply this formula here x1 y1 this is x2 y2 and this is the ratio m is to n and if you apply this formula x is x coordinate of the point is mx2. 1 into minus 3 plus 3 into 1 divided by 1 plus 3 and that is equal to 0. Similarly, y coordinate is m y 2 that is 1 into 9 plus 3 into minus 3 divided by 1 plus 3 that is 9 minus 9 that is also equal to 0 that is 0 0 is the required point. And similarly, the coordinate of the point which divide the line segment joining the points x1 y1 and x2 y2 externally in the ratio m is to n is given by m x2 minus n x1 divided by m minus n comma m y2 minus n y1 divided by m minus n. 
Next one is midpoint formulae. In particular, if m is equal to n, the coordinates of the midpoint of the line segment joining the points x1, y1 and x2, y2 are x1 plus x2 divided by 2, comma y1 plus y2 divided by 2. And the last formulae is area of triangle. That is the area of triangle whose vertices are x1, comma y1, comma x2, comma y2 and x3, comma y3 is half magnitude of x1 into y2 minus y3 plus x2 into y3 minus y1 plus x3 into y1 minus y2. For example, the area of the triangle whose vertices are 4, comma 4, 3, comma minus 2 and minus 3, comma 16 is half into x1 into y2 minus y3, 4 into minus 2 minus 16 plus 3 into x2 into y3 minus y1, 16 minus 4 plus x3 into y1 minus y2, that is minus 3 into 4 minus minus 2, that is 4 plus 2. And if you simplify this, you will get magnitude of minus 15 divided by 2 that is equal to 27. As the area is always positive, you have to take the modulus symbol here. And these formulas you already studied in the previous class. And in this chapter, we are going to study a new concept on the straight line that is the slope of the straight line. And before studying the slope of a straight line, let us take this example. That is, uh, suppose there is a ramp and uh, you know how the ramp will be and the height of the ramp is 5 units and the distance of puta perpendicular from the top to the bottom is 9 units then slope of this ramp is 5 divided by 9 and you know that if this height is reduced slope also will be reduced and if height is more the slope will be more that is simple concept of slope and here we have to study the slope of a straight line and it is slightly different because if you take a ramp a slope cannot be negative because the slope will be always a positive because the height will be positive and distance both are distances and the slope will be positive. But uh, if you take a straight line the same idea you can apply to find the slope of a straight line and uh, in this triangle you know that opposite side divided by adjacent side. Suppose this angle is theta and uh, 5 is opposite side and 9 is adjacent side and uh, it's a right angle triangle. You know that opposite side divided by adjacent side is tan theta. Therefore, the slope of this uh, is tan theta where theta is the angle of inclination of this side with the horizontal. Now let us come to the slope of a straight line. The same idea you can apply and uh, as theta increases, slope also increases here and uh, theta is the angle made by the line with the horizontal. Horizontal is x axis here. But if you take a straight line, it is possible to measure the angle in two different direction with the x axis that is either positive direction of x axis and negative direction of x axis. And moreover, it is possible to measure in anti-clockwise and clockwise direction. But to define the slope, we will take the angle of inclination of the line. The angle of inclination of the line is angle made by the line with the positive direction of x-axis taken in anti-clockwise direction. That means here if you take the blue line, the angle of inclination is angle made by the line with the positive direction of x axis in the anti clockwise direction this is the angle and uh, thus this angle of inclination will be always positive because we are measuring in anti clockwise direction and the angle of inclination cannot be more than 180 degree and it always lies between 0 to 180 degree. These things you have to know. And first you should know the meaning of angle of inclination of the line. And here there are different lines and angle of inclination of these lines are different. And here 
the green line is a line with the in angle of inclination is zero and the slope of this line is zero and the angle made by yellow line is less than angle made by the red line and therefore the slope of yellow line is less than slope of the red line and you can observe slope of the yellow line is 1 by 2 whereas slope of red line is 1. Now let us take one line here the green line. Now I will change the angle of inclination of the green line and you can observe the slope also changes. Here the angle of inclination of this line is 18.43 degree and the slope of this line is 0.33 and if you still increase the angle of inclination also changes increases and slope also changes you can observe and the slope of the line when the angle is 45 degree the slope of the line will be equal to 1 and when it is 90 degree the slope is not defined here and it is actually infinity if you still increase you can observe the angle of inclination is 121 degree and the slope of this line is minus 1.64 here the slope is negative because the tan of 121 degree and which is negative because the when the angle is in second quadrant tan of an angle is negative therefore the slope is negative thus the slope may be positive or negative real number now i will come to the definition of a slope first you should know the angle of inclination the angle theta made by the line l with the positive direction of x axis and measured in anti clockwise direction is called inclination of the line and the angle of inclination of any line always lies between 0 to 180 degree and if theta is the inclination of a line l then tan theta is called slope or gradient there are two terms slope and gradient both are same and tan theta is called slope or gradient of the line L. Now, the slope of a line is denoted by small letter m and thus we will have m is equal to tan theta where theta is the angle of inclination of the line. The angle of inclination of the line means angle made by the line with the positive direction of x axis taken in anti clockwise direction and the slope of the line whose inclination is 90 degree is not defined because you know that tan 90 degree is not defined therefore the slope of the vertical line is not defined and it may be observed that slope of x axis is 0 because the, what is the angle of inclination of the x axis with the x axis it is 0 and also slope of all the lines parallel to x axis is also 0 and the slope of y axis is not defined. You remember these results and this question may be asked for one mark that is what is the slope of x axis. The slope of x axis is 0 and uh, with this much I will conclude this session and in the next session let us come to the some other important results on the straight line. Thank you.